is a panel about brain hacking, which as I say is my, my favorite, favorite thing to think about and talk about. So I'm just delighted that I could get some of my favorite brain hackers here to uh, tell you guys all a little bit about it. I'm Joel Murphy and I'm a co-founder of OpenBCI. We make an open source EEG system. So EEG is kind of the least invasive, easiest way to go about acquiring brain signals, but again, it's still quite complex. I'm Tim Marzullo, and I'm a co-founder of Backyard Brains that makes and distributes low-cost neuroscience equipment for people of all ages. So when I was getting my doctorate, I would read about remote control insects out of Berkeley or remote control insects out of Cornell, and I was not a postdoc in one of these two labs that have large DARPA funding, but I was interested, maybe as some of you are interested, so my co-founder Greg Gage and I wanted to see if we could build something similar for less than $100 so that anybody who is curious could learn about this technology of interfacing with the nervous system. I'm Brent Williams. Uh, I'm a director of the iTeach Center at Kennesaw State University in uh, near Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm here speaking about transcranial direct current stimulation. Put yourself in the place of a young person who is severely depressed, depressed to the point of suicide. And you've been through medications, you've been through counseling, all kinds of different things, and there's just nothing left. And that, that same individual, you put a TDCS headset on them, treat them for five days, and they begin to come out of their depression. Treat them for 30 days, the depression is gone. Now, that isn't something I made up. That's actually case work that's happened in Atlanta and around, around the world, actually. There's an enormous amount of research going on about ways we can alter our brain function uh, with electricity rather than pharmaceuticals. Um, and the amazing thing is that this is not only going on in clinics and research labs and hospitals, uh, some of this gear is now cheap enough for people to experiment with on their own in their garages and their basements. Uh, and this is such a fascinating cutting edge that the IEEE just has to be involved in reporting on it. I think it's really important for IEEE to be here and to be curating some of the talks here because they're, they've been around forever. They're the largest uh, organization of electrical engineers. Their participation here is very relevant um, because their uh, members need to know about what's happening at South by South Interactive because things are becoming more and more about wearables and DIY. It's kind of turning into, we're turning into a sort of a DIY culture, if you will. We're not controlling production of this device. We're hoping that you know, we can continue to have a sustainable company, um, but definitely allowing people to have access to this tech is super important. I'd like to add something to Joel's comment. So uh, scientists are an international community, and we have some scientists in Iran, but you can't ship anything to Iran, mm -hmm. uh, given the, the rules. Or Russia, to yeah. some degree, too. So what happened is if um, you go to our blog post, we just published it last week, um, a team of Iranian high school students build our circuits. Yeah. It's like Iranian versions of that. Yeah. It's kind of surreal, um, but that just goes to show that these People that can't get access to this technology because of certain governments can't get along with each other, open source just totally um, destroys that. So. Yeah. And your stuff is all open source as well, right? Me? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. all on GitHub. Engineers, and especially electrical engineers, have sort of always had this spirit about them. You know, everyone sharing information, it's a very much an open community. IEEE is advancing technology for the benefit of humanity.